that many, many years ago, in a very supernatural way, the Lord told me what I was to name my ministry. Do you guys mind if I tell you just a quick little story before we get started? December this is, this 9th, is just amazing. So anyway, uh, the Lord had told me to pass up a job offer I had that was $7,000 a month, mileage, per diem, all that great stuff, you know. And he told me he wanted me, he wanted big. me on the radio and he did it in a way that was so supernatural that I, I could not say no. And I, I really had no idea what he meant. It's like, you want me on the radio. I'd done radio programs and uh, I'd been on several radio programs. I was even on an AM program for, I don't know, many, many months, but I didn't know what the Lord meant when he said, I want you on the radio. I mean, what do you walk into a radio station? Hey, I want a radio job. You know, it's like, what? Now I'll just take it as he would like to do a live show. Cause I was talking about him showing up on the show live, but that's very good to see you. Robin said, I'm on there. Green handle. Love you. I want you on the radio. I mean, what do you walk into a radio station? Hey, I want a radio job. You know, it's like, what? So anyway, so, uh, long story short, you know, I, 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 I didn't know what to do. I just, I want you on the radio. Uh, Tyler, I'm just going to ask you first. What are your thoughts on, on this thus far? Oh, I'm just, uh, I, I, I feel, I feel the presence of, of the Holy Spirit just around everywhere. Um, I would love to hear from you because I know you have lots to say. Robin has some great videos. Uh, here, let me see if I can show you the, uh, let me see if I can show you the image from it real quick. Okay. Uh, guys, mind if I just share just such a cool testimony? This, I mean, this is just miraculous. So I don't want to go over it myself. It just encourages me. So anyway, um, so yeah, this friend of mine had offered me this job and I, I used to skydive with him. And so it was a super easy. Internet surfing easy gig awesome. anyway so the lord told me no i don't want you to take the job well when you're a single dad and someone's offered you seven grand a month starting they'll move you to ten thousand in three months and you know it's a shoe and no problem it was guaranteed and you get mileage and per diem and all that good stuff as i said okay look guys here's the deal trey offered me this job and da -da -da, and i was doing construction and the lord had been just hey, I'm doing construction really too. infusing me with his word and and the spiritual gift that he had given me. And I'd laid hands on a couple of people already. And so I was manifesting a lot of spiritual uh, abilities. So anyway, so then he, he communicates to me to say no to the job. What? And I was like, why? Yeah, right? This is a great deal, you know? So anyway, so he said, no, I want you on the radio. Well, I didn't know how, what would be the mechanics? I mean, how do you end up on the radio? I had been on a and uh, on AM radio before on Liberty Broadcasting Network. And I did a show uh, several times a week with this guy, Rick Hummer, that used to be a radio jock out in LA. Liberty Broadcasting Network. And I did a show. Yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't take a job there. Mm-mm. I would not take a job in that building or that building anytime soon. Oh, but you can't just walk into a radio station and say, Hey, I want you to give me my own show, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, wait, it was another. Blah, 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 four. Or does that only pertain, pertain to three? Blah, blah, blah. On the radio, my daughter. Is that driving? Driving on the radio? Is that on the road? Or is that on the radio? And the radio is 144. There's there's a time. You know, the radio. Like a fake death. The Eden race. Because that's always a way to communicate, too, is 
a word and if somebody wants a word to be known and they would just type it in a bunch of times and leave it at the top or close by. Art museums, when you're driving in Philly and you're driving on 95, Head around. You head right by Lincoln Financial Field, which is where where the Eagles play the Birds. My daughter goes, "Look, and Amy's ice cream." I'm like, "What?" We're on the highway, <laughs> and my daughter goes, look, in Amy's ice cream. It was so random. I was like, what in the world? Amy's ice cream? You don't even like ice cream. And she was looking all the way across, like, six lanes of highway, maybe eight lanes right there. And uh, there's a movie theater south of Austin, and there was an Amy's ice cream there. And my daughter just, bird's eyes, I mean, just it's an eagle is a bird way way off the highway and it's a very specialty ice cream uh chain in in texas there are very few and far between of like five miles it's five miles from bird's eye view off the highway there's really no exit before that, well, let's see, there's one. Once you get to Center City, there's eight, eight lanes. Uh, once you get there, 195, there's really no exit until you get to this point, which is right around the stadium area and then just go you have access road right here right to broad street Texas, straight ahead. I mean, after I've committed to it, there's no exit. I mean, so once you commit to something, there's no way out. See, when you take on jobs, jobs are, I mean, you're either you're either all in or, or you're all out. Or you take a job and then it's like, no, nah, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And then there's an exit. I drove like five miles. And I'm driving. I'm like, okay, guys. Uh, well, well, you know what? Uh, there's no exit, guys. Let's just stay on the road. So I'm talking to the boys because they're the ones that want the ice cream. If you just take a little trip all the way up Broad, broad Street. Right down the middle. There's that William Penn building right in the dead center of it. It's right way. But if you just make a left, go up here to 19th Street. They were totally fine with that. They're okay. And then all of a sudden, I here I come up on Slaughter Lane. Abaddon Sheep Slaughter. COVID I am right then. I just right after right after the boys give me their okay, which was my green light just to keep going. And then I go, oh no, here's an exit. Again, characteristic Johnny. And then I pull off and I'm getting off on Slaughter Lane. My daughter says, oh dad, I'm I need something to eat. And you know, she had started. She was eighth grade, so she would.
So you, if you pull off around in that area, if you're in a in like a, a eighth grade. But you can head back over here. And I'm like, okay, what do you want? And so when we go over the highway, if anybody wants to get out Google Earth and look, it's. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm looking at Google Earth, Slaughter Lanes 19, C, Abaddon, uh, COVID. Cheap slaughter 19, go with 19. You can even check it. So I get off on slaughter lane, I go over, there's like a Kentucky mm -hmm. Fried Chicken, there's a, some Chinese place. So you're getting off the highway five miles away, going at what the Chinese place? So you have a Chinese place, slaughter 19. Well, no, there's, no, there's Chile. Oh, there's China. There's China. There's your 19. Head back up from 19th Street. Right over on the other side. Slaughter Lane, I go over, there's like a Kentucky Fried Chicken, there's a, some Chinese place, and she says, she says, Dad, can I have Johnny Carino's? Johnny Carino's is sit-down Italian food, where you go in, it's like... Around. There's, a, there's an Italian flag there, Italy. AM radio. What was that lady's name who called in? Something. What was her name? Or the first, the one that got saved first on your radio show, Johnny. Italian food chain. You know, I look at her and I go, "Dude, we're on a road trip. We got to get to Waco." And when you showed the Waco sign, I don't know where you have it at, but it's upside down. A P nine one one. She just gives me the, oh, please, Dad, I don't feel well. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. And so I, I park in Johnny Carino's. I run in the door, and I run up to the bar, and I ask the bartender, so I say, uh, hey, is there anything you guys have that's, like, really, really fast? And she goes, angel hair pasta. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I was like, okay. She goes, yeah, I'll have it out to you in less than five minutes. And if it's like, say if it's like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, less than five minutes would be 11.55, 10.55, 9.55, 8.55, 7.55, 6.55, 5.55. .55. Backing out, I go around the restaurant. I look to the right because I'm going to make a left. That way I intersect that access road. And when Back from the start. Access Road, if you just go this way to Broad Street, then when you just look to the right, it's straight down, five miles down. Backing out, I go around the restaurant. I look to the right because I'm going to make a left. That way I intersect that access road. And when I look to the right, I'm staring right at Amy's ice cream. However, if you're backing out of there, which is uh, the Italian spot, and you're looking right down at the right, And if you look straight down there, that's what you'll see. Where there's a Chinese place and an Italian. Look to the right, I'm staring right at Amy's ice cream.
I'm like, what? It's supposed to be five miles south down the road. I was like, South. Is back this way. Five miles down the road is the Burt's Access Road. I'll never forget that 4.1 miles up Access Road, uh, exit 50, and that building there, 17th JFK, looks like the back of a $50 bill. 555. Wait a minute. I was like, time warp. And I look to the right. I'm like, what the heck? There's an Amy's ice cream right there. And then right then in front of my children, I go, I hear the Lord say, go to this Amy's ice cream, Jonathan. Go to this Amy's ice cream. I have a message for you. Okay, on the radio. Look at Amy's ice cream. Okay, don't forget. So right here now. Gone over the loop. And so this is a loop. This is a loop. To the right. Chinese. Italian. Art Museum. But the only thing in front of there is this right there looking right at it telling my children i hear the lord telling me go to this amy's ice cream he has a message for me there my kid see that barcode on air your city a brotherly lies Is that the barcode lie? In front of Amy's ice cream on that fateful day. And look. On that fateful day. I don't know why. It just seems like Christmas is that fateful day. 365 days later from when I thought it was going to happen in Philly, it happened in Nashville. It was right there in the window on air so anyway for those of y'all that are my friends and love me when i saw this on air i just was like oh my gosh everything being said here is december 8th 2021 today is december 9th 2021 December 5th, 2021. So uh, I know Robin is on major delays and Robin next time, please. Um, if you get, uh, if you get a headset, we'll, I would love to hear from you because I know you have lots to say. Robin has some great videos. Children, their, their jaws just went. Uh, and then those who don't like me, let me ask you this. For those of you guys that don't like me, uh, how do I end up at an Amy's ice cream that said on air right after I said, but I keep hearing the Lord saying he wants me on the radio. Take it as, now I'll just take it as he would like to do a live show because I was talking about him showing up on the show live. But that's just me, like, you know, my delusional state of mind that nobody's really paying attention to my channel. I just act like they are. But Robin, how that happened? But I keep hearing the Lord saying he wants me on the radio. How that happened? Anyway, just not food for thought. So anyway, so we walk up and I tell the boys, I'm like, okay, that's it. Get in front of the sign. I'm getting a picture because they were like, oh my gosh, dad's here. Hey, God, <laughs> I was like, I told you. Anyway, so anyway, and then I took a close up on air. There it is. Okay. All right. So let's say you're here and you go up and then you walk in.
with your little uh, eight pointed star there. Go up, you walk in. Told you. Anyway, so anyway, and then I took a close up on air. There it is. Okay, now when we walked in, Cal Tiffin. I heard the Lord say, turn around. Well, well, hey. Turn around. Looks all spacey, invasion or something. Hang on, let, let me slow down a sec. So we walk right in and we walk up to the counter and there's a girl behind the counter. And the first thing I do is I say, hey, I got a question for you. Is there another, is there another Amy's ice cream down further? That, and this girl goes, yeah, there is. Down by the, the theater. The further down. If you just turn around, the only thing you see there is, again, something that's dead in the way. And she said, we, we leased it down there, too, to, to eliminate any competition in the area. This is what they're going to be able to do in, I mean, the craziest of ways. In the craziest of ways, they're going to be able to do this. Yeah, because there's not very many Amy's ice creams. And she said, I know, we did that specifically to eliminate competition. And I, and I went, oh, well, let me ask you a question. Does that one down there have, like, a sign in the window that uh, says open? And she goes, yeah. And I go, does it say on air? And she said, oh, no, 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 it just says open. Go to this Amy's ice cream. I have a message for you. He was letting me know to pass up the job go on the radio, do what he said, trust him. And I did. So anyway, here's kind of another interesting part of it. You know, so the kid, the boys order their ice cream. And I hear the Lord say, turn around and look. And I turn around and I look and I'm like. So if you turn around and look, turn around, and look, and then you'll see that down there. Turn around and I look and I'm like, that's freaking, it's an invasion. And you know, back then I was like, huh? That's very odd. Let me show you what was on the. Let me show you what was on the counter. Look at this. What an utter disaster. Cow tipping. A, a wizard has to have test subjects. You know. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me put on. Oh, there we go. I put on echo cancellation for Robin. Uh, Robin. Robin's hood, so he can. Uh, so he's not uh, echoing us anymore. Look at this. What an utter disaster. Cal uh, it's for people that are drunk and think that cows sleep standing up. And it's a way to, you know, set up somebody you don't really like that much, I guess. You could be drinking from that cup as a, a drunker drinking of that wine. And it's a way to... And so if you get... If the angel hair will be out in five minutes, then you'll have 555 less than that at eight, and center building eight. It says, look, cow tipping, and this was their tip jar, look. Tip jar. Sinful bliss. But it's an upside down cow. But look right here. Look at this. What an utter. Look at the letter U. What an utter. Look at the T and the T. Right side up cross, upside down cross. Now, Matt, and this is also Matt as Matt, well. Matt together, squared. we have two T's. One oh, T plus one T equals two, two T's. I'll tell you right now. I didn't. I didn't notice that until. Not too long ago, long ago, I didn't notice the tip jar. What an utter disaster! Yeah. So we're, anyway, isn't that fascinating? I mean, just so the Lord's been communicating with me for a long time, and He's my function and what what my goal is tonight. Um, because I prayed before I came out here. I mean, the Lord sent me on some trips that look like absolutely you're not coming back. But I was content with it. I was like, okay, let's go do it. So
believe that. So in my heart, I would know that I was willing to do that, to know. Like, hey, if you want me to go to the desert and skydive into the desert and die, that's cool. You know, you don't mind if I take some smoke grenades for extraction just in case, <laughs> which I had. I did. I took smoke grenades and I never ended up using them because he showed me he wanted me to skydive into that canyon. Do you know why he wanted me to skydive into that canyon? Because it represented a desolate desert and he wanted me to land in it. And he even told me that I would read Isaiah. I forgot. Maybe it's 25. He said, I want you to read this before you jump. Once I set up my LZ and it said, I will make springs out of dry ground. I may, I'll make rivers in the desert. In the day I jumped, a river went through. Springs out of dry ground. I may, I'll make rivers in the desert. And the day I jumped, a river went through a, a canyon in the desert? Are you kidding? Did you see my LZ? It that was split directly in now. half. Guys, if that's not the Obviously. most insane miracle in the world. Uh, I mean, and I found the rock that was split in half. My mission type thing. That's what Chinati, the way Chinati was presented to me at it didn't look like it looked like something I was going to go do. And he allowed me to believe when I accepted to go and I went that I would not be returning is what it looked like. In like a, <laughs> in a kind of way anyway yeah but from that point on you didn't return because you weren't you return in a different way i was willing you know what i mean just like the night i got saved i was willing to open a door and, and knowing i would probably be killed in that alley but if i opened the door i would know the truth you know so i was willing to open that door as well and that's why he has me doing what i do Bell boweth down. Bell. Y'all know who Bell is, right? Bell? Bell. Well, there's Bell. There's Bell Shazar, which was, he was second in command. And he was, uh, he wanted to, he wanted somebody to interpret the writing on the wall. So he, he was slain that same very night. But that's because he, it looked like he, what he did was he, he bowed down. The Old Testament, Baal. The Phoenician deity, Baal. A master, an owner. In order to do that, I mean, a, a wizard has to have test subjects. Owner. Okay, so a master, owner, bow down. And then it says, they stoop to their idols, blah, blah, blah. And let me go down here. Remember the former things of old. Remember. There is none else. I am God. Now look, it says Elohim. I use this specifically to, to challenge your brains a little bit. I am El. There is no God beside me. No El. I am Elohim. I'm all of them. But dry click, you just said that he's God and he's all of them. Did you bail down? One nine six one. One nine six one. Self existent eternal Jehovah. And I'll one nine six one. What, do, what happens when you take one nine, which is the street, one nine, if you turn it the other way, it's going to turn into a six one. Ain't that something? Wow, look at that. 
which also happens to be a Hitler's ring, the six-pointed star, an eye, the fountain of life, memorial, a target, where that Omicron girl's dancing on, Garden of Eden, the tomb is empty, the 12 trees, one of them chopped down, Lucifer fell from heaven, Nebuchadnezzar was chopped down as a tree, twin system, I'll just go back and I'll buy this one back. Self-existent, eternal Jehovah. Do you get it? He creates it all, so he redeems it. Like God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I mean, this is, it's round. Everything is being represented right in the dead center. You have to find Ashtaroth before this, before this meta verse is over. Yeah, there might be another one getting ready to take off, but this is one here, and we're at the end of it. Even that in the background, street center triangle. It even has like a whip tail look to it. That whip whip tail look. I think he's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world before the foundation of the world. Why? How? How would you have? How could Jesus be the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world? How? Well, because the foundation of the world didn't begin. He had to have been slain first in order for the world to actually begin where God is in charge and rule and reigns and it's nothing like we've ever experienced at least not us here on earth because he was you're looking at it right there he's putting his guy in okay I'm gonna put myself in this guy I'm gonna put my energy in this guy and we're gonna let that living soul energy Co-mingle with the serpent race that's already there. Then everyone with that wanted the ba basic language is to be able to talk to um, the entity that that helps manifest that universe. You have to speak in a Python language, so you have to talk to a serpent to to get to that Oculus. I guess yeah, you, you can start there into the system all through the history of the world gets injected he knows every single one of you where you go when you go because he is you you are him we are him and then he awakens you at the right time arise oh sleeper wake up from the dead do you get it it's amazing we, we have a, i know we have a little bit of delay but we heard you so the the amazing part about that is what you're <laughs> Yeah, you're going to start to learn exactly what's going on uh, when you, if you start monkeying around with that. And what those are is the Oculus glasses. And, um, and I was just talking to Jacob and he was, he got some Oculus glasses and I'm like, man, oh man. See now, but that's, but also look, Christ did go and touch and work with the lepers, right? So the, the point of this is maybe we, some of us may have to go in there. The difference is, the temptations of the things within it. This is why I say this is the most important message for those that are walking in Christ, because it'll be, it'll seem like it won't do anything, but the temptations will be there. I promise you it's, I mean, all you have to do is look at the numbers of the, of the, of the porn industry as it is right now, but it will be initially everything that will get you in there. They're going to do to get you in there. Let me go to uh, uh, Theophilus. Is your how's your mic working now? Is it work back on working? Give it one more chance there. Can you hear me? Theophilus, who? Scenario: We see two of those roles: a guy who has expertise to investigate, and another guy who has the money to make it happen. Look, I don't know how God has blessed you, 
But I'm thankful for both men that God used to write Luke and Acts, both the actual writer and the benefactor, just like he did for both Luke and Theophilus. Also, Luke says in the book of Luke that his purpose is so that Theophilus can be certain of the truth of everything he was taught. Luke didn't say so that Paul would be declared innocent in a court of law. So this one just doesn't make sense. Now for the two that I think are most probable, government official and wealthy benefactor. Though I could get behind either one, my favorite is the wealthy benefactor theory. Not only is there some historical evidence, but the fact that Luke was a close companion of Paul, that one of Paul's main bases of operation was Antioch, and that this type of patron relationship was common in the first century, lead me to really favor this theory. Here's kind of how I imagine it going down. Of his ribs. And he closed up to shut up figuratively to surrender to. Always remember, wealthy doesn't necessarily mean that you're wealthy. You can be rich in the spirit, uh, or you can be very wealthy. I imagine it going down. Theophilus, a wealthy man who loves Jesus and is. So he loves the spirit of Jesus. He's really active in his church. Like the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast comes in multitudes of ways. The difference is you'll begin to see the similarities between all of those ways because they will all be linked, that portion of it. So approaches Luke and says to him, hey, I know you're a trained historian and you're an excellent writer. How about I give you expenses for a few years? so that you can go back to all of these places and investigate the eyewitness reports about Jesus and the beginning of the church so that it can all be well documented. Over it to be converted in the Old Testament. Do y'all know what you're looking at? You're looking at the Lord just handing Johnny a big chunk of gold. That attribute it to all the churches so they can be confident in what they were taught to. The theory is that Theophilus is Paul's defense attorney during his trial in Rome, and Luke is writing to provide court documents of the origins of the Jesus movement and the life of Paul up to that point. Luke wrote this. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. What are your thoughts on, on this thus far? Oh, I'm just, uh, I, I, I feel the presence of, of the Holy Spirit just around everywhere. So who was this Theophilus guy, and how did he get two shout outs in the Bible. Well, we Sorry, are Robin, I did all your shows. You guys are in deep, 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 deep trouble. By the way, Robin, you're... Yeah. Anyway... Uh, we have uh, Robin's yeah. hood showed up. Uh, Robin, you're... Uh, oh, you got headset. Great. We know who Theophilus is. We do know that Theophilus literally means loved by God, but that's really the extent of what we know. The second theory is that Theophilus is a high-ranking government official, and that's why this book was specifically written to him. This theory comes from the fact that he is called Most Honorable Theophilus, the same designation given to Felix and Festus, both high-ranking government officials name-dropped in the book of Acts. Jesus, throughout the book, is constantly reaching out to all different types of people. People who are alienated either by society or because of their own sins or whatever. He'll reach out and, to, and befriend anyone. Robin's hood showed up. Uh, Robin, you're, uh, oh, you got headset. Great. Because, uh, all righty. Robin, Robin, what are your thoughts? Can you, can you hear me? Okay. So let me uh, add Deborah to the stream. Deborah, hey. what are your hey. thoughts on this? Um, I have a different, uh, well, I have a, uh, I know, I know what you're saying. Um, I have a different perspective than other people because I was actually very heavily involved in Second Life. Head nod. Robin, can you hear us? Robin's hood, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. I can okay. hear you. You want your bat cat back? Start telling the truth. 
it's not that hard to do. I mean, once you start doing it, it's like it's like you break the old habit and create a new pattern by just telling the truth. Because if you don't tell the truth, well, me and a uh, me and that cat here, we'll be uh, spending a lot more time together because. I so I wanna, I wanna, I'll leave that open. You're, I you're, can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Planned in the beginning, the mood all changed. I've been chewed up and spit out and booed off stage. This world is mine for the taking. Make me king. As we move toward a new world order, a normal life is boring. Today we were talking about the Tower of Babel and how they were trying to build it to be like God and the Azarats, or however you say it, and the the other structures and stuff. Um, I think AI is going to be the downfall. <laughs> we'll use it for great things. Will there be more? Oh, and this is the point that when Malia was making, will oh there God. be more sin, just more opportunity to sin than there is right now? And that's opportunity to sin than there is right now. And that sin is sinning against yourself. You will weigh the impacts of the things that you do in this digital space. It is going to mess with you. And it's going to be far. I mean, if, if this is a world of karma driven life, what? Sinful bliss. We're in trouble if people are going into there. And that was my question. <laughs> what yeah, <it's> fire? <laughs> yeah. So, so Blossom, tell us. Um, yeah, if it's even here, let me. I'm going to ask you this question. Do you have it? Are you concerned about sticking around here on Earth? Not at all. I honestly, uh, even. I'm not concerned about sticking around here either. Meaning, what she's saying is, I would I would have answered your question, but I was on a second second delay about that fire that you were talking about. It comes from heaven. It it devours uh, your enemies. But this, and my kids are kind of ready to go. <laughs> Not being concerned being here on Earth, meaning you're ready to go. Like I don't, I am not concerned being here on Earth. I'm ready to go. Well, I'm not concerned staying here on this Earth because there's nowhere to go. I'm not concerned about the fire coming down from heaven, literally, because that's not the way it works. Uh, it's the fire that devours. Like when Elijah was up and he called down fire from heaven. And it uh, it burnt everything up, and then he slew the four hundred and fifty false prophets. And that was downloaded to me as to that's what we were, so that we were in a simulation. Lions getting ready to attack me, so I told him that it's getting me prepared to be attacked by the lions. Mm -hmm. well, God's word returns void, and you know what Mary says? I am the Lord's servant. So Mary didn't really believe that she could possibly have Christ. So then God was like, hey, check out this YouTube channel. You see that guy over there? That's not Christ, right? Giving birth to, right? Uh, uh, the, the voice of one in the wilderness, the witness, the witness of God. Uh, the you the say, amazing part uh, about that is check, what you're, <laughs> yeah, you're going to start to learn exactly what's going on. Uh, when check, check out that right there. It's kind of like, it, it encourages your faith. God brings you to those that are, you know, old you know, bringing, uh, bringing into the world this uh, a new prophet named John, if you will. Uh, uh, the spirit of Elijah comes first before Christ, the Christ that's in. That proves you've been converted. This is what proves you've been converted. That's why when Jesus comes to judge, either you've been converted or you haven't. And if you're still one of these, you're in deep, deep, deep trouble. Oh, that's not going to happen because as soon as... The seven year tribulation starts, all those people are going to be like, oh crap. <laughs> um, you know? Yeah, no? and who, who wants to live forever? No. Yeah, some yeah. tell me. Noah, or 
Yeah, Noah did for like 900 years. You know, I, I found out recently that uh, the tribulation already happened and the mark of the beast already took place. I agree. Well, look, there have been many tribulations. Yeah, I, I had a lot. I had a lot of things I yeah I would have said, but but what's the point? I agree. Seven seconds later, to what? What do you? I don't even know what you said. But yeah, I agree. Tribulation already came. We're here. It happened. It's it's coming to the end point. The mark of the beast has already been something that was inserted. Well, sure he did. He said to Jesus, if you'll simply bow down, you know, get down like everybody else and worship me, this is mine to give. All authority has been given to me. Do everything they want to within it while they watch us. I'm just saying, for those of flat earthers where, you know, they thought I, I don't think of those, I just don't have an opinion about it. But now you're like, Mary, God inspires you and say, you know what it says, you know what, go check out, go check out, uh, check out this YouTube channel that I put before you. Why don't you just go there? I want you to understand that you're, you're worth more. You get this thought in you. The angel of God, the messenger of God, the truth of God overshadows you for a second and says, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I need to go to God. And then you, you are encouraged by those who share in how blessed you are. He's brought down rulers from their thrones. We're going to see a lot of that. That's already going on today, by the way. A lot of big name people coming out, right? Being revealed. He's a lot to cover here because I have to wrap up Philippians 4, but I hate to wrap it up. There's so much gold here. Um, I preached a sermon just on all the precious promises in Philippians 4. Uh, if any of you are interested, the sermon is titled... Uh, my life changed when I met Mr. Glass. So that's very life changing to me. And I have so much gold here. Talk about a nugget of gold. What? Overturn it. What? To be converted in the Old Testament. Do y'all know what you're looking at? You're looking at the Lord just handing Johnny a big chunk of gold. On a crino. Now, here you go. This is, I told you, I, I know I speak to two audiences because I deal with so many hate things. So here's the thing. All you guys that hate me, I love you in Christ. I'm super sorry for you, but you just got your ass handed to you.